Hey, Patreons. I, uh, I just wanted to thank you again for, uh, for supporting uh, Monroe Live. Um, it's your, your assistance that really makes this thing uh, hum. And uh, what I'd like to do today is tell you a little story, a sad story, about something I thought was <clears throat> going to set the world on fire, but mm, didn't quite work out. So I'm going to start at the beginning. And in 2004, we applied to, um, we applied to NASA for a grant, uh, uh, an SBIR and an STTR, in order to um, develop a new plane that would be part of SATS, the Small Aircraft Transportation System. And uh, to do that, we bought this airplane. So this airplane is a CB. Um, the CB uh, was an amphibian, so it has wheels. It has wheels, but it, it also lands on water. And it was very, very, very popular um, in, the, uh, in the late 40s. Uh, the thing that attracted us to this wasn't the fact that it landed on water or it was popular. What attracted us to it was that it only had about one-tenth of the labor um, to build as opposed to any other plane of its size. And I wanted to know why. So what we did was um, we took this thing to pieces and we found out that it violated almost every rule that the FAA had uh, put in place for an aircraft like this. There are over 10,000 spot welds on this uh, aircraft. This aircraft is made out of an aluminum that really and truly uh, I never heard of before. And it really isn't being produced right now. It's great for forming and this, uh, this plane is all stamped. So if you look here, you can see that there's, you can see that there's uh, stamps all along here. All these components were stamped out. Kind of what I do in, a, in, an air, uh, sorry, in an automotive company. But again, these things are against the rules for the FAA. These hoops are also against the rule and they're spot welded to the floor, uh, to, the, uh, to the floor of the uh, aircraft, not the floor of the aircraft, but to the hull of the aircraft. If we look in here, down here, um, there's a sponge and uh, that's a real sponge. And that sponge, in essence, came from 1940s. We, we had uh, somebody who's an expert in that sort of stuff and he looked at it and he said, that's been there forever. Which means that there's never been any um, modifications to the hull. That, is kind of curious because as you can clearly see, this is the original green paint that, uh, that it uses for corrosion characteristics and there isn't a single rotten spot. Not one of those spot welds was rotten, not one. That, that's kind of amazing. If you talk to anybody that knows anything about aircraft, they'll tell you that a spot weld, and by the way, this is a seaplane as in the ocean. This plane was mostly in New York and New Jersey, and it landed on the ocean continuously. So you've got salt water, you've got aluminum and spot welds, and this thing should be just the rusted out mess, but it's not. And we were very curious about that. This is also built differently than all the other aircraft of its, of, of its era. This isn't using um, like ribs and longerons. This is, uh, this is what they call an exoskeleton. It means, that the, um, it means that the outside skin supports the structure. Now, if you, um, if you talk to people about this, they'll tell you that this plane should weigh more than it actually does. Um, so a lot of the anomalies that we saw here, we thought, hmm, somebody in the 1940s, this one was built in 1946, somebody in the 40s knew something that we don't know now. So that's where we decided to um, have a look at this plane in general. So the first thing we did was we wanted to trade, change the, um, we wanted to change the uh, powertrain. So this Franklin engine is the original engine that came with this aircraft. Uh, it has, it still is FAA certified. 
I wouldn't trust it uh, to put into anything, a go-kart, not anything, nothing. This thing is old, it's uh, air-cooled. Um, it has all the things that the FAA wants, like twin spark plugs and things like that, but, and a magneto. But to me, this just looked heavy and ugly and old fashioned. When we started looking at changing this aircraft around, this was the engine that we were thinking of putting in its place. And actually there's a place in Toronto, Canada, that is uh, taking, this is a Corvette engine, that are taking Corvette engines and putting them into CBs that are still, uh, still flying. One of the other things I forgot to mention is that 50% of the uh, CBs that were built are still flying. 25% are either in museums or being worked on, and 25% of them are either scrapped out or they're, um, they're either scrapped out or they're being used for parts. Um, this engine going on top of there, that's where the uh, engine was, uh, was located, gives this thing a huge advantage because first off, it's lighter. Secondly, you can use a uh, direct drive. Um, I don't need this transmission. So that's another thing that, that, that worked out well. And like I say, many people who have CBs have gone to this engine um, and just put an X in front of their uh, thing, uh, in front of their uh, code number. And that just basically tells you that it's a, uh, tells you that it's an experimental plane. So when we had finished our project with, uh, with NASA, you can see something up there that, that uh, 20, 2025, sorry, 2005 uh, SAS project. When we came back with the results, a lot of aircraft companies were scratching their heads. No one had ever done an analysis like this and none of the small aircraft companies had ever even thought of going in this direction. So I thought that maybe uh, we, should, uh, we should try and investigate further. Now, um, so we designed our own aircraft. That's called a paradigm and that's it right there. That's an illustration of it. Okay, so if you make an airplane, um, you need a few things to go in it. And, um, and that's where these things uh, came about. So this is the seat that we designed. This is an aircraft seat. Um, and in 2005, this was big stuff. Um, this has a place for, in, the, in those days, your, <laughs> your Blackberry. Um, it moves out of the way so you can get into the seat. This is lighter than everybody else's. We found out that um, we could get, um, this is called an AMSAFE airbag. So this is like the airbag that you might have in your steering column or in your car in general. But this one here is built into your seat belt. So if you get into a crash, this thing would go off and keep you from going into the instrument panel. It would save your life. So we tried this out and we gave it to Patty Wagstaff. Patty Wagstaff is probably the pre or was the premier uh, stunt pilot in North America. Without a question of a doubt, I've seen her do things with airplanes that no one else can do. She never blacks out. It's amazing. Anyway, uh, Patty loved the seat. She was going to be our sponsor for the aircraft and the seat, sell it to other companies. We also developed heads up display. We developed a system whereby this aircraft would uh, fly from point to point uh, totally automatically. You did not have to be a pilot, you had to be an operator. We also did our own heads up display. All these things, and a laser horizon, all these things, all these things were going to be put into that aircraft. So the first thing we had to do was come up with a powertrain idea. And if we look over here, you can see what we came up with. This powertrain um, ultimately wound up at NASA in some warehouse uh, because, um, because things went south uh, around uh, 2008. This, uh, this, this unit uh, that we created would definitely let that aircraft uh, take off and basically uh, at almost idle speed. We never ever had the aircraft going any more than about um, 3,500 RPM, which is 
like barely breathing for this for that Corvette. We didn't have to have it go any faster. It it did really really well. Now, you'd think that I'd be in the aircraft business today, but mm, not quite. So let's go into my office because every time I tell this story, <coughs> I get sad. <coughs> <clears throat> so let's uh, let's talk a little bit about the paradigm. This is a five seat aircraft. Now, because this could fly totally autonomous, all these seats that you see here could fold flat. Um, so I could carry cargo. It could also be an ambulance. Um, I could carry two people in here that were in litters without any pilot. I could take off and land on just about anything. This is made for dirt. It isn't a, it's not a screamer. This doesn't go uh, three or 400 miles an hour. It goes about 180 miles an hour. It can get up to 200, but, um, but we kept it at about 180 miles an hour. It uses the Corvette engine, or it could use a diesel engine, or we could go electric with a wheel motor back here and the battery pack in the wing box, which is where the gas tank is if, uh, if we made it the normal way. This plane uh, is pink for a reason. Uh, the reason that it's pink is because we designed this aircraft for women. So the first rule on the design schedule, the first specification in the design schedule was that, the, uh, that a woman in an evening gown uh, could elegantly enter the aircraft. To do that, we have sliding doors. This, this door comes out and over something similar to what you'd have if you, uh, if you had a, a, a minivan. Easy ingress and in, in, uh, exiting and in, 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 in getting into the uh, aircraft is something that we, we felt was extremely necessary. It only has one set of controls. If I turn it around here, you can see that there's only one stick in the center. This allows for, if you do have a pilot and he wants to, or he or she wants to fly it uh, by hand, uh, then fine. You've got a side stick, which actually is now a center stick, and you can fly it with either your right hand or your left hand, depending on what makes you most comfortable, and, uh, and, and that would be fine. But most of the time, this was built for are made uh, so that you told the uh, the airplane where you wanted to go. So let's say that you were here in the Detroit area and you had this at the Troy Airport, which is a small airport, and, uh, and you said, I want to go to Chicago. The computer would come back to you and say, you want to go to Chicago? No problem. Where in Chicago? You would tell the plane and then the plane would say, well, the closest airport would be Pewaukee and it would set, it would lay in a course and, uh, and a flight plan, and then when it was ready, it would tell you to go to the uh, stripes. You'd go to the stripes, it would take off, and it would keep you out of storms, keep you away from other airplanes, keep you from flying too low or too high, and then land at Pewaukee Airport, and again, totally, uh, totally autonomous. Great idea, right? Yeah, <clears throat> great idea. Okay, so, Let's, uh, let's talk about what happened. So I, um, I went out and found investors. And I, uh, and we, Asha, I forgot to mention, we also developed our own uh, propulsing system. Um, this, this is different than a prop. Um, and th with this, um, this tunnel right here, uh, we could actually make this thing about half the noise of what a conventional aircraft was. Um, the other thing that I forgot to mention was that the exhaust system from the engine went into this back compartment and the heat was what we used to make sure that we didn't get any um, um, icing buildup on the tail. Because this is a liquid cooled engine, we got heating and air conditioning inside the cab, but you're always going to have extra so we took that extra and we put it along the leading edge of the wings. And, um, and that gave us uh, protection for icing 
um, if we were flying in, uh, in cold weather. A lot of good stuff, a lot of great ideas. And then reality came and clipped us. So we bought, I bought, um, the property in back of our old building and I paid about a half a million bucks for it. And I was going to put our pilot plant, plant up, a pilot plant to make the first ones of these. We needed a lot more than just that. And so we contracted with a company to be our investor. And um, <clears throat> the investment company, unfortunately, was Lehman Brothers. So as we were just about to get the money, guess what? Lehman Brothers went bankrupt. So with that in mind, we were pretty unhappy. Um, this was probably the finest example that I'd ever worked on to, uh, to make a product. And unfortunately, um, <clears throat> unfortunately, it went south. Um, this would have been a great aircraft for mobility. If you were in the Detroit area, you could fly to Chicago easily, Toronto easily, Cleveland easily, Indianapolis, no problem at all. Anything in the air for around two hours, two, three hours, everybody needs a break after that. Um, and we also, in essence, had a, had a scheme with another company whereby if you were in this aircraft, you could talk to the aircraft and when you landed, you could have a pizza ready or a, or a rental car or um, anything you want. Hotel reservations, we had it all sorted out. But unfortunately, when the banks melted and our bank, Lehman Brothers, um, folded up their tents, this all went, uh, went by the side of the road. I don't usually talk about this. And uh, the guys were looking. They said, what's the best flop, if you want, I've ever had? Well, this is it. So anyway, I'd like to thank you again for being uh, supporting our, our channel, uh, Monroe Live uh, YouTube channel. And I, uh, I, I just want to say thank you. I guess that's the best thing I can do. Thank you to all the patrons. Thank you. See ya.